everyone. My name is Ashley and I'm here to talk to you today about DDT, which is a local pollutant um, that is currently in our ocean over here in Long Beach, California. And it's become kind of a big deal. It was discovered recently, well, rediscovered recently by um, Occidental College. And they're currently trying to rectify the situation, but it is a challenge and it's something that needs to be spread amongst the community so that everyone is aware and hopefully we can find a solution to the problem. So DDT stands for dichlorodiphenyl trichloroethane. That's a very long and hard word to say. Um, its chemical structure is chloride 14, hydrogen 9, and, or sorry, carbon 14, hydrogen 9, and chloride 5. Uh, it is a colorless, tasteless, and almost odorless crystalline chemical compound, and it was made um, by condensing chloral hydrate and a chloro, and chloro benzene in concentrated sulfuric acid. Sorry, I'm really bad with um, chemical terms. So, <laughs> or scientific terms, I, just, I don't know what it is. It's, they're all a tongue twister for me. Um, okay, anyway, and then the structure right here is what the compound looks like whenever it's all put together. Uh, it's caused, there's a few chemical reactions that can occur from um, DDT, but actually DDT itself is a chemical reaction. So it's uh, created by the reaction of a trichloroethanol um, combined with a chlorobenzene. Uh, it can react to iron, aluminum, uh, salt, and alkalis. Alkalis, yeah. Uh, it's incompatible with a few other chlorides, and it can react to strong oxidizing material. A little bit of background information. So DDT is actually something that is man-made. It is not something that is just spontaneously found in the um, nature. However, they haven't quite figured out a way to break it apart, so that kind of sucks. Um, it was created in 1874, but it didn't become widely used until it was used for the military in World War II, in like around the 1940s, I believe. And it was actually created as an insecticide um, for malaria, typhus, and other insect-borne diseases. Uh, you can kind of see from the picture right here, they literally would just spray tons and tons of it. And um, it actually started as a military use, mostly for to keep the mosquitoes and stuff um, at bay. <laughs> or not at bay, yeah, at bay pretty much for um, in foreign countries, not necessarily in the United States, because we didn't have too many that were very highly, you know what I mean, insects that brought too many contaminants. Um, so they did it for the soldiers, and then later it got used as civilian use um, until about the 1950s and the 1960s when the U.S. Department of Agriculture stepped in and put a ban on it because it was found to have carcinogenic uh, properties and could cause cancer. Um, they haven't directly linked cancer to DDT in humans, but they have in animals, which is what I'm going to get into next, which is the environmental effects. So DDT itself, again, it's something that doesn't quite break down. So the way that they actually get rid of it is by burning it, and that kind of makes it dissipate and turn into something else. Um, but once it's created, it's a very hard to get rid of. So in the air, it has, it can go long distances in the upper atmosphere. It kind of spreads everywhere and, um, and then it will kind of, you know, fall down to 
<laughs> the local area and then it will harm a lot of the local wildlife. Um, it's a very persistent chemical, so it stays on the earth and anywhere that it is really. Once it settles into the ground, it's not like it's something that breaks apart and goes away. It's almost like plastic where there's just no, no, you know, deconstruction of it. Um, in the water, same thing. It just kind of, you know, the water can, I mean, obviously water can kind of break it apart a little bit, like in terms of concentration wise, but same thing. And there's been no real way to get rid of it. Combustion seems to be, or um, that, yeah, combustion seems to be the only thing that seems to get rid of it. Um, and then it actually accumulates in adipose tissue in local animals. So right here, I have a picture of one of the barrels um, getting into environmental effects. So here in Long Beach, um, re uh, I want to say like about a year and a half ago, a bunch of these barrels of DDT were actually found between Long Beach and Catalina Island. Uh, they have guesstimated that there's probably over a million barrels, but so far they've only been able to locate about 500,000. Uh, but the bad thing about that is, is that it's leaking on the bottom of the ocean. And so the reason that they were kind of suspicious about something going on in the water was because a lot of the local, um, marine, you know, the wildlife conservation, you know, um, the rescues, <laughs> the seal rescues and, um, local marine life rescues, they noticed that a lot of sea lions and other bigger, you know, ocean animals um, were coming to them sick, like in stage five cancer. I mean, I don't know if it's stages for them or not, but with cancer, that was pretty much irreversible and they had to euthanize so many animals and they were like, what's going on? So that's how the whole thing got discovered. But these are the local barrels that we are currently dealing with. They're all out in between pretty much Los Angeles all the way down to San Diego that they've been able to account for. And they're trying to figure out a solution to it. Um, I brought this <laughs> lovely picture right here because it kind of shows you how it goes from being runoff to sediment and then it goes all the way up to where it's a marine mammal that gets um, affected. So it typically affects fatty cells and and there's other, obviously, some um, points here. I'm not going to go into them in too much detail, but it just, it's one of those things that replicates itself, and that's what causes, or it's what causes the cancer to happen, right? And yeah. That being said, <laughs> here's my references for this particular PowerPoint. Um, if you have a moment, look into it more. I know that there's a few agencies that are trying to collect donations to figure out some type of scientific solution to the local problem. Uh, I don't know if it is actually gonna happen or not, or if anybody's gonna be able to figure it out because it's quite an argument right now. It's under discussion and they don't know what the best way to handle the situation is. So. Uh, that is all that I have for you today, and uh, that's my story. All right, have a good afternoon.